everybody. It's me, your buddy Dave, the host of the Dark Stuff channel here on YouTube. Thanks a lot for checking out my latest video. It's much appreciated as always. So uh, this is an edition of this year's week where I kind of sum up everything that's been going on in the world of the Dark Stuff. And we're going to be reviewing uh, Built to Spill, who I saw for the 22nd time last night. Quasi, featuring Janet Weiss, formerly of Sleater Kinney, is the opening act. Uh, and they were amazing. I also saw Ringo Starr, formerly of The Beatles. You might have heard of them. A Giant Dog, fantastic show. We're going to be talking about that. I've also got a bit of replacements news from Tommy and from Chris. New Mommy Heads. Uh, brand new, some vinyl pickups that I, I got recently. And uh, in addition to that, I'm going to talk about this Dave Grohl situation. And I think I have a different take on it than most. get to any of that I have to talk about this brand new band that I just discovered okay now when I say a new band sometimes people think that means within the last like five years or so oh yeah they're they're new they've been around for about five years no 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 this band formed in early 2024 I'm talking about this band called Snowmen. Now, this is the first band that I have ever discovered on TikTok. now when I'm looking at my phone on TikTok. Generally, I'm looking at comedy, or I'm kind of looking at girls dancing. Those are the, those are my two categories for TikTok. But in this case, it showed me a little 15 or 30 second clip of this band playing this insanely cool sounding Gang of Four ish kind of rock, and then the singer comes on to do the lyrics, and the singer looks like Bunny Carlos from Cheap Trick. I was like, what? I was. I mean, my brain was going like crazy because I was like so intrigued by this band. Why does this band, they're young guys in their 20s, they're sounding like the late 70s from the UK, and then the singer looks like Bunny Carlos. That video popped up a couple of times for me, uh, different clips for it, and eventually I saved it and I started sending it to some of my friends. I was like, I think I discovered my first band on TikTok. Now, note for you guys, Snowmen, I don't know if that's positive for me. I mean, yeah, I am a DJ here in Omaha uh, on the radio and I do this, this uh, podcast, but I'm also 53 and the algorithm of TikTok, which is supposed to be so brilliant, showed it to me. I don't know, maybe your target audience is a bit younger than me, but regardless, it did show it to me and now I'm like the number one fan. So I looked these guys up on YouTube and they do have a YouTube channel with the song on it as well as those same little clips like I saw on uh, TikTok and it said you can buy the track on Bandcamp and that's available on streaming. The song is called uh, You Can't Relate and I must have sent the song either through Apple or Spotify to about 10 or 15 people it was like this band is so amazing what do you think what do you think who do you think they sound like you know and in my brain I kept coming back to Perubu for some reason I was like oh yeah they're kind of like Perubu everybody else said Gang of Four and the guitar riff is very Gang of Four so no question I was at a music meetup thing last week and I was showing some of the people the uh, the, the TikTok clip and I said, look at this guy, he looks just like Bunny Carlos. And my friend Keith nicknamed him Sonny Carlos. So whoever you are, Mr. Singer of Snowmen, your new name is Sonny Carlos. Anyways, I went to Bandcamp, I bought the track, it's only a dollar. It is their only song, literally, their only song. But it is killer. And if their first song ever is this good, like I'm pretty psyched that whenever they come up with uh, uh, more stuff it's going to equally be, be as good and I am going to be playing them on my show next week discuss this built to spill show so if you're a subscriber to the channel or you've been watching me for a while and please do subscribe you'll know that I've seen built to spill live more than any other band ever okay 
I estimated that last night's show that I saw was the 22nd time I have seen Built to Spill. I've seen them all over the country with all the different lineups and everything. When they had, were a three-piece, a four-piece, a five-piece, back down to a four-piece, then a three-piece. on tour doing the 30th anniversary of their album there's nothing wrong with love which is an amazing amazing albums album one of the best albums of the 90s definitely one of the best albums of 1994 and by the way will from vinyl potato and i are working on a best of 1994 video that will be coming soon i can't speak for him but for me uh, this album there's nothing wrong with love will 100 percent be uh, on my top 10 so in my last video where I talked about Built to Spill, I did say that the last couple of shows that I've seen them at have been, you know, less than than stellar. Okay, they were good, they weren't great like they used to be. And I was concerned, you know, I didn't know what was going on. But last night's show put all that shit to rest. They were incredible, okay? Now, it could be the source material. I mean, that album is fucking stellar. Every single song on it is great. Um, but... I'm chalking it up to this band. This version of the band has now been playing together for like three years or whatever. They finally got the, the vibe going and it was built to spill back to being great. Now this album is amazing, but little point of personal privilege here, okay? Something that's always bothered me about this record, two things, and one of them's been corrected. Number one, that is impossible to read, okay? It is like gray or white writing on this tannish background and it's uh, it's impossible to read okay that's number one they did fix that there's a new 30th anniversary pressing on sub pop on vinyl that fixes this you can read it clear as day however the other issue that i have is that they misspelled dystopian in dystopian dream girl and it just bothers me okay like it's not a proper noun. Like if Doug Marsh wants to call him, spell his name Doug, D-U-G or D-O-U-G or D-U-G-G -G, or whatever the fuck he wants to spell it, that's okay. But dystopian is an actual word. And I thought maybe I was in the wrong, okay? And is there actually a way to spell dystopian, D-I-S-T-O-P-I-A-N? Well, I don't know. I try to type it into Google and it corrects me every single time. Dystopian is D-Y-S-T-O-Y-P-A-N. Now, I feel like that has to have been pointed out to them at some point. But on the 30th anniversary pressing, it's still spelled incorrectly. They couldn't have fixed that, honestly. They did play that song, by the way, and it was fucking sick. Okay, just, just saying. The show was quasi. Look, I got a quasi shirt. Okay, you know, because they had a cat on it, so of course I was going to get that. They did have another shirt with a dog, but it was red, and uh, I don't know. Red doesn't work with me generally. Um, I'm not sure baby blue does either, but after talking to Sam and to Janet Weiss a little bit, I kind of felt like I don't know. I should buy something, you know. Um, so this is the one I bought, and I, I'm happy with it. first time seeing Quasi. Uh, they were supposed to be in town about a year and a half ago with John Spencer and someone in John Spencer's band got COVID and they had to cancel the show. So I still have never seen her. I've seen her with uh, Sleater Kinney, of course, and with Wild Flag and probably with two or three other people, maybe with, with Connor Oberst or Bright Eyes, because she does 
tour around with a lot of uh, different artists. All I know is the band was incredible last night. I mean, they were so fucking good. Way better than I, I even expected. And I'm only familiar with their newest album, Breaking the Balls of History. Amazing album title. Maybe the second best in in the history of rock music. Number one would be Motherfuckers Be Trippin' by the Super Suckers. Side note. So it was incredible seeing Janet Weiss that close. She's an amazing, amazing drummer. She played extremely well. Sings along with Sam or whatever. It was, it was just... God, it was good. Next, let's just touch on the, the Ringo Starr show I saw. Now, I'm not going to talk about it in depth here because I did an entire video on that, and I think you should uh, watch it. It was great seeing the Beatles legend in person. Only the second time I've seen a former Beatle. I saw Paul McCartney in 1990, and now I saw Ringo. Uh, great, great show. Watch that video. It's pretty fun, and it, it's a lot of guest stars with Ringo's band. Let's talk about uh, seeing a giant dog. Wow, these guys were fucking good, okay? This is an indie rock band from Austin, Texas. They've been around a little while. Um, they record for Merge Records, or at least they did. I'm not sure, but I first got into them with this record here called Pile. This is from 2016. This is fucking a, a great, great record. Now, after that album, Pile, I, I then heard this one, which is called Toy. I didn't like it as much. This was maybe 2017 or 2018, except they do a great cover of Angst in My Pants by Sparks, and uh, that saves the record. Now, I'm going to revisit this because I hadn't, I probably haven't heard it in five years or something, and so my memory was I didn't like it as much, but I don't know. It's worth a revisit. Anyways, their show was lightning fast. I mean, I have this, this picture... This is kind of what it was like. It's just blur, just a blur. That singer, Sabrina Ellis, is just wailing all over the stage, running around, going crazy, and um, uh, she's uh, very impressive as a as a stage, you know, as her, her stage presence or whatever. Great singer. And as I'm watching the show, you know, I didn't recognize most of the songs, so I couldn't really tell you what they were playing, but. Um, except for the one or two songs I recognized off Pile. And then they go, okay, well, we're going to do this cover song. And I'm like, oh, okay, here goes Angst in My Pants. I get all psyched for it. And they did The Warrior by Patty the Scandal featuring Patty Smythe, you know, from the from the 80s. You know, at first I was a little disappointed that it wasn't the Spark song, but then the way she Sabrina like belted out that that Patty Smythe song, I mean, I made it as a short and and put it out as a short uh, just cuz I thought it was so cool. Uh, opening that show was an Omaha band called Bad Actors. They were a garage rock band. Uh, pretty cool. The singer guitar player looked familiar to me. Though I just don't know how I knew him. I mean, it's Omaha, so maybe I just bumped into him in a record store or something, but he looked very, very familiar. I, I don't know how I know you, dude, but I feel like I might. Ladies and gentlemen, the replacement. <laughs> all right, next, I got a little bit of replacements news, which is all positive. Nothing negative, no deaths or anything, or no uh, uh, people adjacent to the replacements dying like the last set of news. But in this case, Chris Mars has a brand new book. It's called 742 PM. And it's another uh, book of his art. Looks really, really cool. I'll put a link below to how you can buy it. It's from this place called Rare Bird Lit. Uh, looks like another great book from Chris Mars. And then Tommy Stinson is getting his old band Bash and Pop back together. Well, I don't know for sure who's going to be in Bash and Pop because, as you might know, when he first did Bash and Pop in 1993, that was one version of the band. By the time that tour ended, it was someone different. And then when they reformed in 2017, he had completely different guys. So he may do that again on this one. But he's reuniting for Little Steven's Underground Garage Cruise. Uh, this is a cruise to the Bahamas. It takes place on uh, May 9th through the 13th of 2025. 
Uh, bands that are going to be appearing on this thing besides Bash and Pop, Social Distortion, X, Rocket from the Crypt, The Helicopters, L7, Reverend Horton Heat, Old 97s, The Baseball Project. I've done a video on them. Mark Lindsay, and then all these other people. I, I'll, let, I'll keep that on the screen for a second so you can look at it. I'm not going to recite uh, every single one, but cool, nevertheless. Okay, and then just got word that the Mommy Heads are on the verge of releasing their next album. You know me, I cover them all the time. I've interviewed Adam Elk on the, on the channel here. I review them their stuff every single time. All of their albums typically make my top 10 of the year when they come out. Although, guys, they're pushing it a little bit because the new album doesn't come out till November 9th. It's going to be called One-Eyed Band. It's the, the new album. I, I couldn't tell you what number album it is, 14, 15, something like that. Kind of hard to say. But uh, it will be another new Mommy Heads record, November 9th. That doesn't give me a lot of time to absorb it before making my top 20 of the year. But, you know, I'm feeling optimistic. I haven't not liked a Mommy Heads record pretty much ever. So um, I'm feeling optimistic about this new one, personally. Okay, and I do have a couple of uh, vinyl pickups to uh, to discuss with you. Now, first off is the new Swerve Driver, okay? Which I sounded like an idiot when I said the title of it, when I talked about it earlier. It's Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Tito, which I was like, oh, Do Re Mi Fa Sol. It's like the notes, Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Tito. Okay, so that's the name of the album. Anyways, it is outtakes and demos from the album 99th Dream, which was the last album they made before they broke up, but the first when they broke up back in the 90s. Um, the tracks have been available apparently on the expanded edition of 99th Dream, which I didn't buy because I have the original on CD and vinyl, so I didn't feel like I needed it, but now I have it on vinyl. So brand new Swerve Driver, I picked that up on their band camp. I picked up the newest LL Cool J record, The Force. This thing is fantastic. In my uh, uh, recent video about four new possible contenders for album of the year, I discussed this album more in depth. My general comment that I would say to you right now is there is no reason that somebody like LL Cool J who's been in the game for 40 years should be making records that good. That was, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, then I grabbed the newest Jesus Lizard album, Rack. This is the band's first album since the late 90s. And um, Jesus Lizard was one of my favorite bands back in the 90s. I saw them probably five or six times back in the day. Uh, I lived in Madison, Wisconsin in the early 90s, and they were from Chicago, so I got to see them all the time. Um, a truly incredible band. They broke up at the end of the 90s, and they have gotten back together for shows in the, in the past, but this is the first time they've gotten together for new music. I will admit I was skeptical. But I have to say, this record is fucking great, and I'm going to do an entire review on the on that record because it may be a contender for Album of the Year. It's also that good. Okay, and then the last thing I picked up was this Paul Stanley book called Backstage Pass. Okay, I haven't read this one yet. I did read his uh, book, Face the Music. It's actually fantastic. Whether you're a KISS fan or not, it is a great autobiography. We did an episode of Rock and Roll Book Club on it, so I advise you to uh, watch that. It will be linked below, but that's not this book. So I haven't read Backstage Pass yet. Okay, and then I want to briefly, briefly address this Dave Grohl stuff that's been out in the news lately. So, long story short, he stepped out on his wife and he had a baby with another woman. Now that's about the worst thing you can do as a married man, I suppose. My feeling is, why should I know this? I don't need to know this. This is only important to Dave Grohl's wife and his family. It's not important to anyone else and I don't give a shit. Now all this other stuff has come out that apparently this is maybe a pattern, that Dave's been like a serial cheater or whatever. I, I, I don't know, I don't care. Um, I did think that him issuing a statement to the media or whatever that, uh, you know, letting everyone know what happened and how sorry he is and he's going to work with his family and all of this was the dumbest thing I've almost ever seen a rock star do. Who gives a shit? You're not running for governor. You're not, you don't have to make an announcement. You could have just let this one go. TMZ could have picked it up maybe. Who knows? But the feeling that he had to get in front of it is so ridiculous. And the only reason I wanted to bring it up is because we did an episode a while back on Rock and Roll Book Club of Dave Grohl's book. And in it, 
You know, it was a decent book. He has a great life story. I mean, he's been in two of the m- most popular bands and most significant bands of the last 35 years. But so much of the book seemed to be skewed towards making Dave Grohl look like the nicest, greatest, coolest guy ever. Like Mr. Family Man, Mr. Rockstar, Mr. Uh, humanitarian, Mr. Whatever. Like, everything was skewed to present himself in the best light. Now, it's his book. That's what he wants to do. But now that I've read 10 or 11 of these rock star men- memoirs as we've been doing the book club, I'm starting to see that it's a little bit more honest if you show some of your mistakes and, and fuck-ups and things that you did. Now, all he did was mention in the book that he got one DUI in Australia, and even that was kind of minimized. So, I... I didn't think it was part of some cultivated image, but now I'm starting to wonder because that PR statement was literally the stupidest thing I've ever heard. So unnecessary. I don't need to know about Dave Grohl's personal life. I don't give a fuck. Last, I'll put up a couple of playlists from my radio show, New Day Rising. Of course, it's on every Sunday, 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time. And uh, if you're in Omaha, it's 89.7 FM. If you're Anywhere else in the world, it's 897theriver.com. I would love you to uh, listen to it. I also do a monthly playlist here for the dark stuff. Links to Spotify and Apple will be down below. And then this is the time normally where I would show some cat footage and tell you what's been going on with the girls, Nico and Blackie. But I have to tell you, I I might have to have a talk with them. They're on the verge of getting cut from this segment altogether because they provide me with no entertainment. I almost got them. Like, what about all these people who have all this great pet content on the internet and they get millions of views? I can't even get my these girls to chase each other. Like, it's they they're just boring. All they do is sleep and eat, and that's it. And I'm not sure it's entertaining enough to keep on the channel. We're gonna we're gonna have a talk. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye bye. So, uh, you have a MySpace page or something?